Hello everyone, welcome to this section. In this section, we are going to discuss how to bring artistic creativity in language classroom. Firstly, let me briefly introduce myself. I'm Jasmine Chen. I'm from Taiwan. My research focuses on modern Chinese theater, film, visual cultures, and literature. And I also have experiences of teaching Chinese as a second language for many years. Today, I'm going to show you how I bring creative puppetry into a Chinese as a second language teaching. In the presentation outline, as I will firstly introduce the background, and I will introduce how to create a puppet show step by step. And then I will show you uh, the response from my students. So to integrate a uh, language teaching with culture, we have to understand the level for the course and the student bodies. So for my class, this is a high division course, and most of the students in my class, they have done their missionary in Taiwan, which means they can speak Chinese pretty fluently. And they take this job because they want to, they take this course because they want to improve their Chinese. And my job is to help them to further use uh, their language skill in uh, in a perfect way and how they can use uh, their language knowledge to perform a puppetry. So here are some references. We can see uh, how, uh, the, how important to adapt the culture in language teaching. So some um, scholars have already pointed out this is very important for students to know the cultural meaning it would help them to learn foreign languages and also um, to use uh, drama in a language class can make students uh, participate in the language learning, not only emotionally, but also physically. So in my class, before we create our own puppet show, I firstly introduced uh, the background knowledge in the terms of uh, traditional uh, global puppetry. And this kind of global pop puppets um, are very popular in both Taiwan and Southeast side of China. So I will introduce this puppetry, how they are special in the history of traditional Taiwanese and Chinese theater. And also students can they can share their experiences of life in Taiwan since they have a they most of them have lived in Taiwan for a while, but they say that they didn't got a chance to 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 go see any puppet show in Taiwan. So this class is actually very good for them to further learn some cultural knowledge through a language class. Okay, so. After I introduce uh, the background knowledge of puppetry, we read the stories. The story is Grand, a Grand and Tiger. And uh, that is a story kind of like a, a Taiwanese version of Little Red Riding Hood. So we read the story through a children's book written in Chinese. And after reading the story, uh, we create our, our own script. And this part can depend on the class. So for students, um, they are very, uh, they are they have a more language knowledge. They can directly create a layer on script. Or uh, for low division, uh, for low division course, and they can also directly create a Chinese script. Use uh, the words they have learned. But in this class, since I have uh, English versions of a uh, script, so I ask my students tra to translate uh, the English script. That way, I can force them to learn some new vocabularies. And uh, during the translation, we use uh, a Google Doc, so everyone in the class can group editing the whole script. And after we get the script done, we practice reading the lines loudly and dramatically. Okay. And after we get the script done, uh, we also have to practice the lines and record line by line. So this is a good 
chance for students to use the language not just correctly, but also learn how to use the language to represent their emotions. And we also uh, let students use their creativity to create their own stage, their own pop, and uh, what kind of music they want to use. And if you can see uh, on the whiteboard, uh, when we design our stage, I also used the chance to teach them some uh, new Chinese vocabulary, such as how to say, uh, how to say, glue, super glue, tape, or stapler in Chinese. These everyday life vocabularies are not are usually not included in a regular textbook, so students can learn these new vocabularies through this very hands-on experiences. Then we rehearse, we practice in a rehearse, re doing rehearsal for the whole play. So you can see students just hide behind the stage and try to manipulate the, the puppets. They, and they also practice uh, uh, with each other and try to see what's the best way to perform the character. And after the rehearsal, um, here comes uh, the official performances. And since uh, at, right after my high division theater course uh, as the Chinese Tintin course, so we we use this chance to introduce uh, the Chinese Tintin course students uh, this uh, Taiwanese folklore, and we invited them as an auditor as an audience of the performances. So the Chinese Tian Tian course students definitely cannot understand the, each of the lines, but they still can guess uh, the story through uh, the performance. So it's a good chance for them to also learn some new Chinese and learn some cultural knowledge. And we also have an English versions of a script. So we also bring our creative project to uh, a community outreach to a community outreach uh, performances and before the puppet show we use a slide to uh, introduce uh, the local young kids uh, where Taiwan is so we show the world map and introduce uh, the location of Taiwan and also introduce uh, the basic knowledge of uh, traditional puppetry and we performed the whole, whole story. After the performance, we hosted a workshop to teach us the, the preschool students how to perform the puppets. And the, the finally, the young kids have their own performance of the whole story. And you can see everyone were very excited. And this is a very good chance for uh, college students to share what they have learned in class with a, a local preschool young children. So here's a, here are some responses from my students. Uh, so one student said that understanding children's story from any culture is one of the best way to understand what value are important to that culture. And one student said, I never really saw Pape in my mission, but this uh, Pape show has really opened me up to the cultural diversity. And one student also mentioned uh, the script translation was involved because there were multiple parts in the translation where you could translate it in multiple ways. And he also think it's uh, very helpful for him to improve uh, his translation skills because she can, she can see other people's uh, translate uh, their parts differently. And they also said uh, the recording part was uh, very helpful with, skip with speaking. And they realized uh, that you could read the script uh, with no emotion, but that is not a performance. So when you perform the pop, the pop tree, actually you have to consider how to represent your emotion in speaking. And, and one student believed this puppy show would be a lot more group involved than most projects uh, he has uh, been in for his previous Chinese courses. 
So we can see um, the outcome of uh, the project is very positive. Within a, from, within a puppet show, we connect the language learning with uh, the real world. The project integrates uh, the learning of Chinese with uh, the puppetry culture, folklore, artistic creativity, and even a community service. So students are happy to share what they have learned with uh, the young learners. And this is also a good way to attract uh, these young kids to learn Chinese. So here are some references. If you are interested in this topic, you can look at these uh, uh, references uh, online. And that's my presentation today. Thanks for your attention. Thank you. This is the second part of bringing artistic creativity in language classrooms. And my name is Ekaterina, as you can see here. A few words about me. I work at the Intensive English Language Institute here at USU. So the main context of my work and for this presentation is English for academic purposes. I'm also interested in teacher education and I work with ITAs and students in the master's and second language teaching here at USU. Today we will talk about um, creative language activities. I will say a few words about the background and rationale for these activities and share a few instructional strategies that worked in my classes and can work in other L2 classes and uh, some advice for L2 educators based on my experience and uh, what I saw in the literature. So here's an interesting quote <clears throat> and basically talks about why we would use creative language assignments in our classes and with our students. So this kind of assignments, they help um, develop flexible thinking, um, independence of use, high productivity and originality. And um, basically these skills are necessary in all kinds of uh, jobs today. And here's another uh, quote. And uh, as you can see, these um, are quotes from recent research. So it's a very hot topic today. And in this quote, uh, the author um, basically compares the more traditional education that focuses on um, teaching students the same skills and she calls that cookie cutter education and um, the other kind of education where we can focus on student imagination and creativity and critical thinking and that actually can uh, help our students uh, feel empowered and give them um, better uh, chances in today's job market. So what are the ways to uh, bring creative language assignments to our classes? We can use visual art, we can use poetry and metaphors, we can use theater and drama technique, and I will talk more about um, this um, in particular. Uh, students can also create titles or endings to stories in the writing class, or they can write by multilingual narratives. So basically, uh, in my case, in uh, English class, I would ask students to write something related to their culture in English. But if there are specific concepts or words that are difficult to translate from their language into English, they can use it. Uh, and in that way, they can bring their cultures. And also, I can learn more about their languages and their cultures. Uh, so visual art, uh, you have an example here, I in the village. And um, we, a way to use with your students, especially if you use uh, more 
abstract or uh, symbolic kinds of paintings. You can help um, students to develop their abstract thinking, right? So they, and another good thing about this is that the, there is oftentimes in art, there is not one right answer. So any answer, any interpretation they come up with is fine as long as they can um, build an argument for it, right? As, as long as they can um, rationalize it. Um, kind of a similar assignment where they interpret, in this case, poetry. Um, and I give an example here. I know why the caged bird sings by Maya Angelou. So uh, again, students, um, this assignment can again be uh, open-ended. So students can interpret poetry and specifically work with metaphors, right? So in this case, the caged bird stands uh, for slavery, right? But they can come up with other, their own interpretations. And um, metaphorical thinking is important, not only in humanities, but we know in physics and in other sciences, uh, scientists oftentimes explain um, difficult concepts through metaphors, right? So this kind of thinking is very important in all kinds of disciplines. And here we uh, come to reader's theater and more like uh, theater techniques in language education. So let me talk more about this since that was the focus for this presentation. So reader's theater, I'm sure many of you are familiar. Basically, it's um, when you, uh, for example, in a literature class or in a reading class, you assign students different roles and they um, play them out. But the difference from uh, the more traditional theater is that in this case, they don't have to memorize the lines so they can use their text as they uh, play it out. So <clears throat> it's really good for student creativity and imagination and also can um, kind of bring reading classes to life uh, so they can be more engaged and immersed into the reading. Uh, they can try different roles other than students. So somebody can be an actor, another can be their artistic director of the play, other person can be decorator, depending on the, um, their talents and strengths. It also helps build trust and a sense of a learning community through multiple rehearsals and encouraging each other and seeing um, which um, what strength everybody has. And you can also use that to build collaborative relations outside the class. If you perform this play for another class, or even you can take uh, you can. Um, may make it into a community outreach project. So in my case, I used um, Harry Potter, and I feel that is that's a reading that can um, appeal to different kinds of um, students from all kinds of backgrounds. And um, you don't have to stay with the text, right? They, they can again be creative and add their own lines or even write a different ending to a particular story. I also like to use movie scripts. And here are a few of my favorites. So it can be thematical, right? Like here you see Grinch and Alf. Um, that's basically Christmas, right? Celebrations. It's also a way to teach culture. Um, there is also something about intercultural experiences. You see here, eat, pray, love, and English, English. And students can, students I work with, like international students and immigrant students, can relate to some of the themes and experiences. Um, that are played out in these movies. And a way to teach, again, history and kind of more <clears throat> social awareness or awareness of the social issues that we face today uh, is Invictus. And that is um, um, a story that relates some of the events 
uh, related to the life of Nelson Mandela. So a way to work with movie scripts is, uh, depending on the student level, you can either uh, assign your students to transcribe right uh, a certain segment of the movie and then listen or watch it many times and then play it out. Or you can, if it, uh, the student's level is um, just beginners, you can write out the transcript yourself and then give to your students to um, play them out, act them out in class. And kind of, um, you can use those movie scripts as a preparation for this uh, assignment. And those are role plays. So now students themselves write their own kind of mini movies, right? So the topics I like to use is uh, cross-cultural social situations, traditions, or cross-cultural misunderstandings. So the students have to describe the settings that this situation takes place and their particular roles. They have to analyze cross-cultural differences or tell us about the source of a certain misunderstanding. And of course, they have to reflect. Uh, so what are the lessons that we learn uh, through this uh, role play or through this situation? And some tips that can be useful. Um, you want to start with your students, so know what your students' interests are and what their talents are, right? So which activity would be the best for them? And for that, you want to develop a variety of creative language activities to address um, your students' needs and uh, their also what they're comfortable with. Right. Uh, you can also use these assignments to teach culture and bring in students' cultures. And I shared some tips for that earlier. And uh, these assignments can help build student confidence and communication skills if you take this project outside the class. And I think that can be really important for their uh, college and uh, professional lives later on, this confidence and communicative skills. And um, thank you for your attention. I thought, I hope that was useful. If you have questions or comments, you can find me at this email address. And here are also a few references for you if uh, you think that was interesting. Maybe you can follow up with these references. And thank you for your attention. Bye.